So you might be thinking there's seven SI prefixes and not one of them had anything to do with volume. So how on earth can we say that those seven SI prefixes or those seven SI units can measure everything if volume wasn't mentioned on the list? And the answer is, is that although volume isn't one of these seven, we can make it by using one of the seven. In fact, if we take a cube that is one meter by one meter by one meter, and uh, we calculate the formula for the volume of a cube, and the volume of a cube is length times breadth times height, if it's a cube, actually all of those are exactly the same. So one meter times one meter times one meter. And when we multiply these out, we multiply the numbers. So one by one by one is just one and uh, meter times by meter times by meter, well, we could write m times m times m, but we normally write m to the third power or m cubed there. So one meter cubed is a unit of volume. So we can see that we actually didn't need a brand new unit, right? We didn't have to have an eighth SI unit. This is what we call a derived unit. So we have derived it from taking those seven units and combining them together. So we don't have to create a new unit. Now one problem with this unit is that it is really, really, really big. So it turns out that a cubic meter of water weighs about a ton. So in the lab, this is very impractical. So what we normally do is we imagine a much smaller cube, a tenth of a meter across. So we could write a decimeter or 10 centimeters. And uh, if it is 10 by 10 by 10, we can calculate its volume. So it's 10 centimeters times by the same thing times by the same thing. So 10 times 10 times 10 is 1,000. And centimeters times centimeters times centimeters is centimeters cubed. And so this is a much more practical unit of volume. And in the lab, this weighs about a kilogram if you're dealing with water, and that's about 2.2 pounds. In fact, we normally call this unit the liter. So if you've gone to the store and you've bought some pop, you may have bought it in a two liter bottle. So you probably have a pretty good handle on how big a liter is. So think of those bottles you buy on the shelf for like $1.50. They have about two liter, about 2,000 centimeters cubed inside. Uh, we often find an even smaller unit is more convenient. So we can go to a cube that is just one centimeter on an edge. And uh, it's kind of hard for me to draw. So here's one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. And we can see the volume for this is just going to be one times one times one centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. That is centimeter cubed. And uh, this is, if you notice, 1,000 times the size of a liter. So we can say it is one thousandth of a liter. Or, of course, one one thousandth is milli. So we can write that as one milliliter. And we can see that one centimeter cubed is exactly the same thing as one milliliter. And there's a thousand milliliters in a liter. So these are all conversions that you should know. And in the lab, you should be aware of these. We normally refer to volumes in milliliters in the lab. A milliliter of water weighs about a gram. Um, a drop of blood is about a 20th of milliliter. So it takes about 20 drops of blood or 20 drops of any liquid actually, although watery liquids it works better for. 20 drops is about a milliliter. So if you're ever somewhere and you need to do a dilution and you ever need to know how many milliliters, if you squeeze out about 20 drops of something, it's normally about a milliliter. So you do that another thousand times, you have about a liter. So 20,000 drops in a liter.